So what do you think is the appeal? Why do you think that a certain audience or certain people like um, graphic novels? Well, in my point of view, graphic comics per se, it's an art form. It's not a genre of literature. It's an art form by itself. So uh, in France, I think in the late 60s, they, they started to call it the ninth art. They have a number for their art. So it's not, it's not a part of, well, it's a unique form of telling stories. And uh, that's also the fascination for me in it, because you can tell every story with it. What I like is the idea that, you know, if you want to tell your story and you want to make a movie out of it, you need a huge budget, you need a lot of experts to help you uh, doing a movie. If you want to tell a story, you just, in comics, you just need a pen and a paper. That's it on the ground base. And that's fascinating because there's a, a, a huge possibility of, of individuality in telling your story in comics and drawings. There is, uh, there's the question of style. It's an endless field if we talk about style. But for me, the main attraction is that it's such a democratic art form. Yeah. Um, I think the I was very very interested in creative creatively working with um, with illustration and because I come from a world of text and writing so it can be quite insular because you're in this world and if you're an avid reader like I am you just read and read and you get into text and you forget about other expressions that you can express yourself through art through, through I mean through music through poetry, through dance, you know, there are all these expressions and different ways of expressing yourself. But when you work with just text and words, you're kind of stuck in that world. And I was interested in getting out of that world and trying to see if I could do something else creatively. So that was the attraction for me, that I wanted a creative process that didn't just have to do with me you know, sitting and writing, and I wanted to see if the images I had in my head, if I could also get them on paper, so. But in, in that case, it's also uh, necessary to mention that it's, you were not the artist of the book, no. you were the writer, so it's I was the writer, and uh, I had to get an illustrator. Two, yeah. two artists, yeah. more or less, yeah. I'm, I'm going to get to that shortly. I want to know the dynamic between the year. But um, before that, I want to ask about, so there's this whole thing about how graphic novels or comics or books that are illustrated are for a certain audience, particularly younger people. And I was just wondering uh, first if it's the same thing where, you know, in your experience and, you know, how, how we can challenge that um, stereotype do you feel that, first of all, do you feel that um, graphic novels are for the old and young or the stereotype is quite correct or, and then how do you think that we can challenge that? Well, I think the stereotype comes from the fact that when you're a kid, you start with picture books and you're very visual as a child. And that's, I mean, these days now it's even um, different because kids start with the mobile phone and the laptops and the iPads. So kids are really more visual than we were back then. But then you start with the picture books and um, that's where the stereotype comes from. And also because um, in comic strips you have a lot of, for example, the action, you have a lot of the noises, the kaboom, puff and all that. And that's kind of makes it a little bit juvenile or so you will think. But um, it is for everybody. If you, if you like the multimedia way of thinking and you're a creative person and you want to have your own um, way of saying things, it, I mean, anybody can, can read a graphic novel and get anything from it. So I think it's a, a, yeah, it's a good form of art. And I have to, well, there's one thing I want to add that I was at a, at a literary festival in Munich and there was an old lady entering the room and she had a huge backpack. So I, I had the first booth in the room was mine. So I offered her to leave the backpack here stroll around, look at the things she wants to discover, and then come back and pick up her backpack. And, and, and she said to me, no, I'm already there where I wanted to go. I wanted to see your books. And, and I'm like, wow, you must be probably the oldest reader I've met so far. And she said, no, I'm not. My husband is older, and, she, and he likes to share the same pastime, the same hobby. And then I realized this 
couple started reading graphic novels a year ago and now they they made like a, a habit to buy like one book every month and then i thought wow that's amazing that we reach a new audience which is an old audience and our books are not i'm missing out on the young readers i have to say so i think most of our customer base or readers are 35 upwards so i think most of them are 40 50 years old so it's not uh, this graphic novel market is not for for kids at all i think the books are quite expensive i have to say we take special care in, in like good production value so that makes the books expensive and i think we are competing with the youngsters we are competing with a lot of entertainment out there with netflix with with a lot of content out there so I have to admit that probably graphic novels are uh, a bit too expensive to reach the young readers. Yeah. So um, the next question I have is because I work in media, and so a lot of what we're trying to do where I work is, you know, to create more visually appealing work because, like you said, there's a lot of content out there that is, you know, competing for everyone's attention. And and what we found is that more people are interested in the visual, in the comic strips, and all of that. And I'm just wondering. Why, why now? Why is it that more people are interested? In, why does it seem like more people are interested in comics now? Well, I think that will be like a, a question for a marketer. <laughs> but I would say, I mean, you only, um, you're only interested in what you know, and you're only interested in what is available. So if something is available, all of a sudden, um, people get interested in it. And I don't know how, I mean, I can only speak for living in Nigeria, it, that has not been the case. Even if, if you grew up here, then you will know about it can be super and Dauda and all that. And if you had Bazooka as a kid, we had all those comic, comics in Bazooka. But that was in the 80s. And then in the 90s, all of a sudden, all that disappeared. And then those days, I remember teaching my younger brother to read by um, reading um, comic strips in Nigerian newspapers because there's a lot of satire and it used to be fun, even if it was not for kids. But, um, and then all of a sudden that was gone for some years. And I think now it's coming back again. And now we have a lot of uh, people that are in the scene and uh, introducing this form of art. So yeah, I, I have no idea why, but I think now it is available and therefore people can see it and know about it. Okay. Okay, but still um, flowing from that, so we had how, um, you know, graphic novels and, sh and comic strips disappeared, you know, during certain times. And I'm just wondering, do you know why? Do you have any idea why that happened? What time are you, are you talking about the 90s? Or... Yeah, the 90s. Well, I think um, for a while in literature in Nigeria in general, um, if you compare to the 80s or 70s, I mean, we had lots of bookshops, we had um, lots of places where you could buy books. And something happened in the 90s, I don't know, maybe it was the military government, who knows? I have no idea. <laughs> but <laughs> something happened there where there were less bookshops and less places to buy books. And I remember at a time I had to go to, I lived in Warren Delta State, and I had to go all the way to Onicha markets to find books to buy. Uh, so, yeah, but I think now we have new publishers coming up in Nigeria and the situation is totally different now, so. So I'm, I'm going to ask, and this question is for both of you, I'm just going to ask, um, so what do you think, and not just in the Nigerian context, what do you think that we should be doing to uh, make graphic novels more mainstream? That's interesting because I, I never think that way. I don't want my books to become mainstream. I want to become the, the, the audience more interested in the topics I, I want to, to offer. That's, that's how I work. It, it's not a very professional way of publishing, I have to admit. But to be honest, it worked out great for, for Avant Verlag and for my company because when I started 18 years ago, I. I I think I did two books in the first year. In the second year, I did no, non, no book at all. And now we are doing 24 books a year, so two every month. That's a lot of 
of work and a lot of uh, pressure on the one side, but on the other side, it's like we we grew into something becoming an obscure publisher on the side, which nobody really cared about. Like nowadays, people are looking at Avant Verlag and 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 following exactly what we are doing and. I, I discover a few copycats nowadays, so that changed a bit, yeah. So our most important or most successful book in the last years was also by a Swedish writer, artist, Liv Strömqvist, and it's a, a very feminist topic. So to go into a kind of a niche, but be big in a niche, that, that can be very successful. And the, the ideal thing would be to turn this niche into mainstream, if we talk about this gender issues yeah that's the that's the strategy <laughs> so, do you want to add something to that no that's, that's fine <laughs> okay um so i'm going to ask about um german calendar no december um, i think you've told us a bit about why you decided to do it that way but can you just tell us more and then what the process was like so i know that if you're a writer for instance it's sort of a solo process at first you're just writing a book but you had to work with uh, um, an illustrator so i wanted to know what the process was like okay it's a, it's a long story but i will try and <laughs> i'll try and uh summarize that's the word okay um well for years i've been i had the boarding house story already and i wanted it to be in text and um i wanted also for it to be in a graphic form but um the thing is i don't know if if anybody has read the book then you will see that if you are going to when you're a child in nigeria your idea of what it house is totally not what it's going to be. And I had a totally different idea about body in house. And I always wanted uh, to have that somehow good, bad, interesting, however the experience is. But I wished I knew what that was about. So I had that idea that I wanted to do that. And BB is not here, but BB Bakar Yusuf is um, the publisher in Cassava Republic. And we had talked about for years about doing something, but um, we never got around to it. And then I think it was about five years ago or so, she, she wrote to me and said, you know, there's this opportunity now to produce a, a graphic novel, and are you interested? And I said, yeah, sure. And so um, already the story was already there. I, I knew exactly what I wanted on paper, the first part at least. Um, and then uh, Johan was involved and got us in touch with um, um, Birgit, who is an illustrator with Avant uh, Card. And that was how it started, basically. So I'm, I'm going to come back to the uh, marketing side. But um, in your experience as a publisher, I know she just mentioned having you know, illustrators um, with Avant. Um, what's, what's been your experience generally in creating graphic novels? So is it, so I've worked in publishing and I know that you know, people send in their work, they send in manuscripts and, you know, and all of that. So but what's, how, is, how is the process with graphic novels different from what operates in um, typical traditional publishing? Well, I think maybe there is not so much difference. So you have different personalities, different authors. So there are some authors who are looking for an editor who want to have advice, who come to you and ask for, like, if they are stuck on a certain point in the story, so they come to, to me or they come to Berlin and we sit down. And there are other authors which don't want to have that at all. They just want to contact you if, when the book is finished. And then I may be having a bit of trouble because I want to make small changes. But then again, so it's a cooperation, more or less. Uh, so I cannot say there is so, so much different from a normal or literary publishing house. It's more or less the same, that kind of uh, work in that stage. So I wanted to ask you, um, I mean, I understand that for a lot of people publishing in Nigeria, there's the fear of who's going to read my book, who's going to buy my book, you know. I mean, in your, you already know who your book is for, but you're still worried about it. And I feel like, you know, you took a leap of faith in doing that. I know that people even publishing something as mainstream as poetry still have that fear. So what, what was your experience like? Well, to be honest, at that point, I really didn't care, you know. <laughs> I just I just wanted to get it out. And um, I think I thought it was a good story, and I felt that people 
people will um, relate to it because there are so many kids that, I mean, many of us here, have, you know, we've all gone through the body house experience. So I knew that it would be a story that people would like. Um, I wasn't sure how it would be received, but so far it has been received really well. Uh, I was in London and I had some older Jamaican women that came up to me and said, you know, this is just like in Jamaica. <laughs> and, and so, yes, it was a leap of faith, but I knew that people would relate to it, and it was a good story, so. So, um, has, like, are you aware of any special marketing strategies that, you know, that Kasava has done to push your book? Well, it has been... Um, it has been in different places. So I, it was, I was at the Africa Rights uh, Festival. And online, I've got a lot of uh, reviews from uh, US marketers. So yeah, online, I think it's, it's, it's been doing well. I, I have no idea how it is here in, in Nigeria, unfortunately. But from the reviews and from the readers who have written to me, it seems to, be, it seems to have gotten a really good reception. So. Um, so I want to ask um, about, you know, online publishing. So is that something that Avant also explores? Uh, to be honest, in Germany, online publishing is not a big thing compared to the U.S. So I had to smile a bit when all the competitors went into that direction because I, I thought, no, I, I'm working eight, sometimes ten or even more hours in front of the computer. When I go home, I don't want to look at the computer in my pastime. I want to read a book or I want to read a graphic novel, which is more or less the same for me. And, and I thought it would be wise to invest in better paper, better material, to, to turn the book into kind of an object. So it's more or less the opposite way of going digital. I want to invest more in the production, into the content of the book, and I don't, we're not going digital at all. Well, if you have a lot of time, you can go to the website of Verwandt Verlag and you can browse through all 160, 170 books we published. You can read the first 15 or 20 pages as a teaser that's what we are doing digitally that's for free so but to publish books digitally is uh, not important in germany i think we are maybe the most conservative book country in the world <laughs> which is good for me and uh, yeah the other thing which i i always miss is if you read comics digitally or on the mobile phone you're missing the page the whole structure of the page so it, it i think it's a, a ridiculous way of treating the artwork to read it digital because the construction of a page is also a, a thing where there's a lot of knowledge a lot of expertise goes into that and uh, to 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 lead the uh, reader the, his his eyes side from one panel to the other. That's the flow of the narration. And on the mobile or in a digital thing, that doesn't work so well. So for me, it's not uh, a medium which is perfect for reading comics. Otherwise, we have to do comics for the internet or for to be or to be published digital. That's something different. But the comics we published in the past are thought for paper and that does not transport well into digitalization that's why i'm shy to to go there so i mean uh so i mean i'm just thinking now that um would how like that doesn't help you reach a wider audience outside of germany i mean is that something that you have thought about that are you attempting to reach other parts of the world or it's just germany for now uh, we are we are publishing German language and uh, we are selling the rights to the books to other countries or to other languages. So, for example, uh, the Birgit Wey, who was the artist also for for Sylvia's book, she did a book before which was called Mad Germans or Mad Germanisch, uh, and that was uh, won a few prizes in Germany, and we were able to sell it to 
I don't know, three, four other countries to France. I remember France. I think there's a, a Japanese edition and a Korean edition. And uh, I'm not sure. I think there is an English edition coming up now next year. So we are selling the rights, but we are not publishing in, in foreign languages, no. And speaking of rights, it just makes me wonder what um, what rights, what kind of rights the illustrator, the artist has in the book production process. You know, usually it's the um, writer that has, when it comes to traditional literary publishing, it's usually the writer that has the rights to the book. I'm just wondering what kind of rights that the um, artist has in the book. Uh, the most common thing is that the rights between the writer and the artist, they are shared 50-50 in, in your case. And I also heard from from other artists or other uh, cooperations that sometimes it's like 40-60. So it's about that. That's the most yeah. normal thing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just wondering because he said that it's 50-50, like in your case it's 50-50. But then, I mean, I, I knew you before I even knew, you know, knew this panel. I knew you and I knew your work, but I'm just wondering that I didn't know and I still do not know who the artist is. So like, in terms of credits, how much of credit does the artist get in the grand scheme of things? Well, I think um, both of us are really codependent cool on each other in that way because without the story, there are no illustrations, and without the illustrations, then there is no graphic novel. So, I mean, both of us have to uh, depend on each other to make sure that to for the story to happen, to, to be in the way we want it to be. So, even if this this was something I wrote, I still had to depend on Bill Gates, who's a wonderful illustrator by the way to produce the images i thought i wanted and then you can understand that you have to have these images in a certain context as well so if you say oh she lifted the bucket what kind of bucket is it you know is it metal is it plastic you know or like in my case i was writing your bunk beds but then I was thinking of these real nigerian black you know <laughs> bunk beds that are you know and then you have to describe all that and if she doesn't get it right then it affects the story. So, I mean, with the context, I had to make sure that the right context was there, but I have also had to depend on her to understand what I wanted. So I have to say that, I mean, we both depended on each other, and it, it was really um, hard work, but very creative, but it was, it was a really um, serious process. So it's not something you can just say, oh, I want you to draw a lamp, you know, it's, it doesn't work like that. It takes hours and hours just to, you know, you can write something that is half a page and that's like, I don't know, three, four pages, something like that. So yeah, so we are very, we are very dependent on, on each other to make sure that the story works. I think it must be also very, uh... New ex a new experience for Billy because she was yeah. before she was used to to write her own books and she was she did everything herself like yeah. she she published already a few books which she, she wrote and that was also an interesting new experience to to work yeah, with it, the it was really for both place. of us <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can imagine <laughs> um, I'm going to ask so do you think that graphic novels are truly changing the face of first media and then literature so of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, can, can no, you well, just? <laughs> no, it, it, it would be my dream to to come true to to do that. But I think that at least in Germany, there is a steady rise of of interest in graphic novels. Also, we get much more media attention nowadays. So there is even uh, our books are on TV, like people are talking about these books, they are in many, many newspapers and big newspapers nowadays. So I think we are on a good way. I'm very optimistic about that because Germany was never a big comic producing or a comic reading country. We had this terrible years of, of Nazism in the last century. So there is no, no rich history of comics, not compared to French, Belgium, or Italy or Spain, yeah. So I think we have to to create something maybe unique, like because we don't have this history, which is maybe also a, a chance, can be also a positive thing. 
because as Birgit, for example, she she draws like nobody else because often her her pictures are not what you read. They are she uses the the it's language lots of symbols. Of, and yeah, lots of a lot of symbols. She uses a lot of symbols, and sometimes the symbols are like the opposite of what the story is telling. So that's very interesting, and I haven't seen that anywhere else. So. Unfortunately, she cannot be here today because she has uh, 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 some somebody is sick in her family. Unfortunately. So, do you also want to talk about that as well? How um, graphic novels are changing the face of of literature and the media? Well, it, I mean, it has always been there, so I don't know if it's changing. <laughs> but um, I think it is part. It, it is a big part of literature, and um, I think we have more more books coming out that people are beginning to take seriously i mean there was uh, was the press police about with mariana yeah. yeah and that was a uh, history, history book as well and i mean there are all sorts of i, I don't know what to say actually <laughs> is it changing the face of media um it will change the face of media i think it as I mentioned already, I think for me it's an art form by itself. So it, it will be maybe, I'm happy if it gets more recognition and if there are more people discovering these great stories which they can find in, in graphic novels, that will be the, like my aim. That's what I'm aiming for. I think that um, on, on, on the recognition side, I think I'm just wondering, like, what do you think that we can do to, you know, I mean, is it because in Nigeria, I'm not sure that you have a lot of publishers who are willing to, I mean, I know that there is um, Roya Okupe who does um, graphic stuff, but I'm not sure that there are a lot of publishers who would be willing to, you know, publish your graphic novels. So I'm just wondering how can we um, give graphic novels that recognition? How can we feel, how can we make it seem a, a genre of, um, of whatever that people feel that they can, do. How can we do that? By what we're doing now. We're talking about it. <laughs> we're discussing it. We have an audience here. And um, just making it available in bookshops and making sure that it's, um, I don't know, we're in the media. <laughs> uh, I think that's enough. Uh, basically, it's an art form like any other art form. The work you put into it is what you will see out there. You what for me was important is like uh, not only importing and translating books from other countries, so try to create original German stories yeah. with German authors, like having local topics, having uh, different German history topics, yeah. topics uh, and have the other stuff next to it. So it, it must, it should become like a, um, a give and take. So there should be good books coming from outside, but the more important is to create yeah. your own Nigerian yes, stories yeah. and books. And it just, I mean, you mentioned something about affordability before, about how, you know, you know, to produce the, exp um, to produce the quality graphic novels, you know, there ha there's a lot of cost that goes into that. And I'm just wondering if that impedes in a way the recognition that graphic novels get or I mean is it in a way is it a thing that you know would stop people from wanting to go into it like who's going to buy this or would stop people from from buying it and knowing that okay yes this is an, an, an art form that I can go into what I hear from the uh, owners of the bookshops is they, they they tell me it's strange, but for graphic novels, people don't care about the money, at least in Germany, which is, of course, brilliant for a publisher of graphic novels. But uh, so far, I, I, I don't get this feedback that the books are too expensive. They say it's strange because with novels, it's a, it's, it's a question of the book is, let's say, 10 euro or 15 euro or 20 euro or more becomes difficult. But with graphic novels, it's normal that they are 25, 30 euro. So this is accepted by the market. Uh, the other thing is, I think, which is marketing wise is also interesting. And that's why I think the numbers of sales is uh, growing. It's because 
graphic novel you can read on a weekend or on one evening if you want or yeah depends of course on the thickness of the book but then again with a novel for example i need sometimes i need a month to read a novel with a graphic novel i can read 10 a week so i go back to the books shop to buy another fix of graphic novels <laughs> so i'm just wondering um this may sound well, but do you think that there is a future where graphic novels will um, completely displace novels as we know them? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I, I don't think so at all. I mean, there are two different genres, and we always have people that are interested in just one or the other. So they will exist side by side, I think, for uh, as I think they, they will done. exist next side by side. Next to each other. Yeah. And one thing I. Uh, have since started maybe one year, two years ago. There is much more interest now from other art forms. So where there is uh, interest from movie producers. They are asking for the rights for the books. There is interest uh, from theaters. So for example, uh, our most popular book, I think there will be like 10 theaters in the whole of Germany who will bring that book on stage in the next year. So it's not one piece. It will be different in every theater, of course. That's interesting because that was unheard of. That's a new development. And it just means, I think, it just means there is content. And what do you do with this? That will be in the future. There will be all kinds of possibilities. It can become a series on Netflix. It can become a theater piece. It can become a dance. It can become painting in a museum, whatever. Yeah. So I'm going to open it up to the house now. Um, do you have any questions for the panelists? Questions? Um, you talked about how there is that how it's interesting to have um, audiences or in audiences who are interested, who are much older, interested in graphic novels. How do you um, battle the misconception or the conception that the one-dimensional conception that a graphic novel and a comic are only geared towards children, as opposed to, like you said, spanning um, various genres, various topics, and various ages? How do you consistently continue to battle that? To bring in more people? Well, this is more or less, uh, as a publisher, it, the books are speaking for me. So it's the content of the books and the authors, which I decide I want to go there, I want to publish, I want to see those books. That's more or less what I'm directing in the in the background. And, uh, and that we reach an older audience that was something I had to discover myself. I was not sure that we reach an audience which is 70, 80 years old nowadays. And there was not a, a conscious uh, thing on my side to go for that audience. It was the other way around. The audience discovered these books and they started to like it. So I cannot give you a very clever marketing answer for that. It's just like how it happened. Yeah. And I think the, the recognition through the other media that comics are treated nowadays, or graphic novels, uh, are treated nowadays as, as an art form, which means there is uh, uh, articles about it in the newspapers and so on. I think that's helped a lot in, in becoming more serious, like being seriously treated as an art form. Um, I have a question. Uh, normally, the, the high print, the high cost of because of the printing of the colored, mostly colored um, books, is it wouldn't it be a possibility to do it for iPad in an electronic uh, form? So people, maybe it would be also less expensive and more reachable for young people. Yeah, it would be possible, but then again, I I think there is a, there's a huge it is cost extensive also to produce the digitalization form and to 
market it. So it's something I, as a book publisher, I, I won't do it. I can sell the rights to somebody who wants to do it. I won't go there myself. Uh, yeah. And so far, the 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 thing which works digitally is like really the mainstream stuff. So people are reading the Batman books online and stuff like that. But our uh, content, our books are not not there, more or less. That's the situation now. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay. So I have a final question. Um, so, I mean, we might have said this once or twice before, but art or literature? where the graphic novels fall because I know that you know there is literature in it and there's art in it so would you classify it as one or the other or they are both? There are elements as you said there are elements of this and that and then again it becomes something unique because it's the the way you tell the story or as I mentioned before the images are not don't have to be what is written, so it's uh, it's more. I think there is a bigger connection to movies, to be honest, than to to some other media, because it's uh, well, we are missing the sound, but then again, we have the privilege to to have our own tempo while consuming it, so we don't have. There is nobody who who forces me in a certain tempo, like in a movie. So yeah. I have more freedom by reading comics. Yeah. So as I said, it's 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 a new thing. It's something a new art form which has to be discovered, and and that's it for me. So there there are books out there which are more like liter literary, more like movies. So everybody has to find its unique voice as an author if he's working in graphic novels. That's it. Yeah. Well, literature is art, so <laughs> so the question for me is a bit strange, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it, I cannot say if it's one or the other because by it being a, by it being a literary form, it's already an art form, yeah. so it sort of cancels itself out already. Uh, so it is art. If that's if that's the question, is it literature or art? It's both. Yeah, it fits into both genres, and uh, yeah. I want to ask you a final question. I know I asked um, Sylvia why she decided to write um, German no, um, German Dece German calendar in December as you know a graphic novel. I want to ask you why you decided to you know to the graphic novel publishing path, and I hope that will be able to encourage you know people who want to go into publishing to explore another kind of publishing, not just um, literary publishing, which is typically what we have in Nigeria. Yeah? For me, it's it's a childhood dream come true because I was always fascinated by comics. Even I I learned reading with comics in my age. I was born sixty five, so that was a golden age for growing up with comics. Because in the seventies, we discovered all the quality of the French, Belgian books. They were imported suddenly to Germany. So, and then again in the eighties, there were comics for adults coming up, which meant more science fiction, fantasy topics. So it's an art form which always, or I could say it grew up with me at the same time. There was always interesting comics out there for me. So it never stopped. My fascination for comics is huge. And I'm I'm still a curious publisher of books. Okay. And and um, one more thing, like what what should um, anybody who wants to start a graphic novel publishing company, what should they have in mind? And I'm going to ask you that. What should anyone who wants to make a graphic novel, what should they have in mind? So, well, if you well, I I heard somebody saying there's a Chinese word which means like. Uh, if you want to hurt your enemy, convince him to become a publisher. So I like that a lot because it means self-exploitation in the first 10 years. That's it in a short nutshell. Self-exploitation, long hours. Uh, it's a hard struggle to to get your feet on in that market. Yeah. But then again, to, to have this uh, 
the connection with the authors, that's rewarding. Also, if you are on the book fairs, they are really fans nowadays which approach you. That makes me proud. That's awesome. <laughs> that's important also. <laughs> well, uh, if you're going to write just um, and not uh, illustrate, then I will say that uh, the most important thing is to have a good working relationship with your illustrator. and to work intensively together and uh, you have to be very descriptive <laughs> and make sure you have your vision clear, what you want, what you don't want. Because like I said, you can have lots of words and perhaps the word you're not interested in is what is uh, illustrated. So you have to be very clear on what you're doing. You have to be very effective in deleting stuff <laughs> because you just want what is relevant there. And if you give an illustrator your work and you've said, you know, the boy is going to school and perhaps school is what you want illustrated, but now the you know, it's just the boy walking, and then that's not what you want. So you have to be extremely strong in what you want. And um, But if you're an illustrator, then life is easier for you. <laughs> you just have to draw and write your own stories. Uh, <laughs> I think an artist would not agree. And not, oh, okay, so for me, I was I was hoping when I sorry when I was working on this book, I was hoping that uh, I could draw, but I can't. <laughs> but I was wishing every day that I wish I had the special gift because then I knew exactly what I wanted. Uh, so yeah, to be open to the creative process to enjoy what you're doing, and uh, also to be open that the other person also has their own creative process going on and will also relate to things in a totally different way than you. So you have to be quite a generous yeah. artist when you work with an illustrator. It's a good practice for, for ego. It's a very good practice for ego because everybody yeah. wants to get what they want, and then you have the editors and publishers coming with their own stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it, I would say that it's, uh, yeah, you, you be sure <laughs> of what you're doing before you start dining with the devil. But yeah, that's about it. All right. So thank you very much, Sylvia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the audience for coming.